Broadcasting worldwide via the Internet out of the region formerly known as the United States, now known as Fema Region 4, Dalton, Georgia. You're listening to the Rock Roll 100 FM.com's podcast, The APS Show. And now here's your host, Anthony Stone. Hell yeah! Greetings, everyone, and welcome to the latest podcast. I'm going to try to do this one a little more professional. I'm going to try to talk clearly. I'm going to try to discuss some things that are going on, in particularly the past few weeks with the racism and the attack on the Southern statues. Now that attack is moving into Canada, I see as well. This whole movement has been paid for by George Soros. May Jesus Christ himself cut this evil, evil man down. That's my prayer, Jesus. This man is evil. He funded the... uh, thing up there in Charlottesville, Virginia. He's uh, destroyed the Ukraine, Libya, several other countries. This man is a nauseous, nauseous, nauseous human being. But the purpose of this podcast, and I'm going to make it as a special video, for my YouTube channel. And I'm thinking I'm putting it on my main one, not the uh, Rock and Roll 100 FM Dicon one. I think I'm going to start using my regular channel again because I've got more subscribers there. Nobody can find my videos on any new channels because they've made it hard to get out there now. So if you subscribe to my channel and you agree with what I had to say, like my video and share it. Because it is very, very important. I have took some history, or clips of history, from a Civil War documentary in the 90s by Ken Burns, and it was on PBS, a publicly broadcasting station, a public broadcasting station, paid for with tax dollars, or was, they was talking about cutting it. I don't know if they did or not. At least as we want to talk about cutting NPR anyway. But these two clips is from episode number three. And I decided I was going to discuss this in the podcast, but I got to thinking. I might better put the pieces there so I have recorded it. And I'm going to do some things to the audio just in case they've got some sensors on it. So it will pass through. But if, even if they take down my YouTube video, I'll still have my podcast up. I will put it up as a podcast as well. But I have decided to take this these clips because one of them is some this guy writing Abraham Lincoln telling him he didn't think he was doing enough for the slavery. And Lincoln's reply was basically... And I don't remember it word for word, so I'm going by memory right here. But I'll have the clip, so it'll be playing in this podcast. Then I'm going to play both of these clips about them turning the Civil War into about slavery because they wanted the moral high ground. Now, you know what that means, don't you? That means it was not about slavery. Just like us people have said, this ain't coming from Infowars.com. This isn't coming from some... KKK website and the InfoWars and KKK is not the same by the way Alex Jones there's videos out there of Alex Jones bullhorn and the idiots in the KKK just like he stands up to all forms of tyranny 
And the KKK is a group that has been meant to destroy this country, to divide and segregate us, just like Black Lives Matter. And I need to repeat that because it didn't come out clear. Black Lives Matter, just like La Risa, just like all these anti-human movements. The reason I call them anti-human movements is because they divide people. Yes, you will hear me complain about Mexicans, a nationality by the way, not a race, Mexicans taking over my town, and I'm going to get into a little bit of that in this podcast as well, because this main, the main idea of this podcast was to protest what is going to fix and to go on in my own town. They're planning to remove the statue downtown that is a Civil War monument. The NAACP was meeting here into our town trying to get the officials to take that statue down. And they've been trying to get the statue down for a while. And I have a feeling that it'll come down this time. But before you do, just realize I'm asking that everybody that voted for Donald Trump and everybody that's still an American <clears throat> here in Dalton, Georgia, I want you to unelect each and every one of the bums that allows that statue to come down, if it comes down. We need to show them a statement. We will put their asses out. We will put their asses out of office. Boot every one of them if they remove that statue. Because the Civil War had nothing, absolutely nothing to do with slavery. That's what these purpose of these two clips that I've taken. And the reason I took the clips is because I have a feeling when I start exposing that it was in a PBS special from the 90s, I have this feeling that that special will disappear. It'll go down the chute, just like everything does. So that's the reason I'm taking the clips. And even if YouTube does take down my video, I will still have it as a podcast. Uh, so let's go to clip number one here. And, uh, in the clip number one, it talks about how they needed the moral high ground to enter or to win the war. They was not winning the war. It was about states' rights. It was about the South to send hell no to a big brother government we they didn't and they had the right the constitutional right to break away but in that clip about lincoln where in the second clip that i'm going to play he actually said it's not about freeing any slaves he can free many slaves he can free free none but at the end of the day it's about winning for the union so that's what this whole war was about. This whole war was about stopping the South from breaking away from a tyrannical Big Brother government. And they had every constitutional right to do so. It even tells you in the Constitution. If you if you if it gets out of hand like that, do away with it. That's a constitutional right. The South had the right to protest. Now, yes, I'm sure slavery had a little bit to do with some of the reasons why the South might have wanted to go away from the government. I don't know. I, I, I hear stories that Southerners didn't even own many black slaves anyway. It's mostly Northerners that own black slaves. But at the end of the day, this war was not about slavery. But yet the race baiters the George Soros paid Black Lives Matter and these other people and there's a good YouTube video out there by the way from this black dude who was walking around streaming himself talking about the, the truth about what was going on in Charlottesville so uh, if you can find it look for it I may discuss several other things in this uh, podcast as well uh, I ran into a documentary today on uh, Netflix and it's called 
unacknowledged. And it's Dr. Stephen Greer, and he's given out all his info about UFOs and all that. And as you know, I like Coast to Coast AM. And by the way, Coast to Coast is on right now here at 2.48 AM. I'm not listening to it in the night. I don't listen to it every night. I, indeed, I don't hardly listen to it much anymore at all. I do every once in a while. I still like Coast to Coast. I don't even listen to InfoWars like I used to. Uh, I might hear an hour to two hours of it. And they got a new show, by the way, in the mornings now by David Knight. It's called Real News or something like that. I believe that's the title of it. Uh, anyways, uh, I'm going to uh, stop this recording here. I'll come back and record some more later. If I don't do it before I go to sleep, I'll do it afterwards. But this is one of two clips starting out with them wanting to get the moral high ground of the Civil War. And this is from PBS's Ken Burns Civil War. You can look for it. And it's episode number three. Uh, you can watch this for yourself till they take it down. And I have a feeling once I point out that there is a PBS documentary tell, shedding the light of the truth behind the Civil War, I have a feeling it'll disappear down the chute because we are in 1984. And no, it's not the year 1984, but that's where we're at. We're in the big brother, down the chute, get rid of world that was talked about in that book. Maybe even far advanced into that world. But to get back to the Civil War and the uh, Antifas, the Antifas are communist fascist bastards. And uh, they're doing the will, just like they did in 1917, in the Bolsheviks in Russia. These things are the same. And that was another thing that gets me back to the uh, communism. I watched uh, Red Dine again this weekend. I figured out that probably when I hear the muffled out sound on the video on the television... Uh, it's probably because of, uh, they're calling America a whore and all that. And I have a feeling it was, might have been censored for that reason. Uh, but anyways, in the television scene where they arrest, where they've got his daddy in the count, the re-education count, that Obama wanted to open up re-education, and he was even going to call it re-education count. I have a feeling a lot of these taken down statues will be replaced with Obama and Karl Marx and all these other evil, evil entities of communism. Uh, uh, but anyways, so let's go to the break. And now we'll hear the uh, two clips and then I will be back to discuss some more stuff. I especially get back to the UFO thing. Because uh, last month was an interesting month around here. Above our skies for at least two or three weeks, we've seen some strange crafts. And the Stephen Greer documentary touches on this stuff. And I'm probably going to make my recording longer here because I've dwelled off into another subject, an interesting subject. And it probably shouldn't cross with the Civil War thing that's going on, the Civil War removing the statues. But it's still a very interesting subject because this documentary sheds some light on maybe the things that I've seen. You see, in 1947 when the Roswald, and I've heard this before, but this guy has the documents and everything. He's not dealing with... Uh, Rumors. He actually talked to people within the government. People that, 400 people, etc. Congressmen and Air Force Marines people. And I don't know about the Marines. Uh, I accidentally said that. Air Force people, uh, people in the government, the black guy. He's dealt, he's talked with those people that dealt with the black book projects on the space programs and on the UFOs and he's been doing it since 1992 Stephen Greer and uh, I've heard him on Coast to Coast many times 
this documentary is very very interesting. I haven't finished it yet. I'm going to finish it. I run into it on Netflix. But it sheds some light on what I might have seen. And I tested these things to see if they was human, by the way. You see, many governments pay attention to Infowars.com, including our own government, people within, people with other countries. They want to actually shut it down. I screamed Infowars.com at it, and it raised above the trees, and it started blinking its lights at me. And then it went back down. Infowars.com, it done it again. So I knew I was dealing with something human. But in this documentary, they tell about how they stowed the uh, technology. Among any other, many other interesting points in this documentary, it's way too big to capture on one podcast. But when the Roswell crash happened, it defined the technology of our world today. Uh, they uh, actually kept that alien alive from 1947 to 1952, according to that documentary. And I've heard this before, too, on several other things. And I'm not sure if this is mentioned in the documentary because I hadn't finished it yet. But I even heard that it liked strawberry ice cream. And I, that, that show was mostly debunked that come on in the 1980s that I watched where they talked about the strawberry ice cream. So it may not be... It may not be truthful. The Stephen Greer's documentary is pretty accurate because he's talked with top-level people. Uh, he even went over some of the myths that they talked about in the Roswell, but he was telling that the, about the, the LPI document and everything. But uh, I'm going to tell you how they controlled their craft with the hands and the helmet. But my old smartphone that I used to have before it died on me, the Samsung, and I believe it was S4, you could actually turn on a function on it where you could hover your hands above it and it would move. Now, I couldn't ever get it to work accurate, especially with the web browser. So I turned it off. I didn't use it. But that's exactly how their craft would work. It, they put their hands above the screen and use their helmet to fly it with. They didn't have no switches or like our aircraft does. They done it all with hovering their hands above a screen. And I thought about my smartphone who had that technology on it. So I pretty much believe that probably in what I seen this uh July was uh a whole bunch of crafts over there and there's a bunch of them. We never could count how many of them there was. One day we thought we saw nine of them. Uh, but I tested this one craft and it raised above the trees a little bit. And I was screaming and shouting at these things because I thought they was, uh, I thought they was, uh, police state stuff, you know. Alien didn't really cross my mind. And then it finally did and I thought, oh lord, I was screaming at them things. So one of the nights I decided to test it out to see if it was human. I thought, well, if it's an alien, it's not going to know what the hell Alex Jones is. And even if it does know about Alex Jones, it's not going to care. But when I started screaming Infowars.com at this thing, it raised up and it started blinking its lights. And then it raised back down. And I done it again and it done the same thing. So I'm taking it that what I seen was human. But they've got this technology. They've had it for 60 plus years. According to the Stephen Greer documentary, and it was called, what was that called? Unacknowledged. You can look for it, and if you find it, watch it. So I'm going to close, and I'll come back to the Civil War, and I'll discuss even more about my town, about what's going on here, and I'm going to get some stuff off my chest that I wanted to discuss about this, because it's a travesty. It's a travesty that we were even flooded by illegal aliens. And I'm going to touch on that too, so I'll be back later. So enjoy the two clips, then I'll be back to discuss them. On the morning of July 22, 1862, the President called a cabinet meeting. What he said took everyone by surprise. After long thought, he told them, he had decided to emancipate the slaves. 
it was a stunning moment. It was against everything Lincoln had promised uh, all the Republicans and, and indeed the country. He would not become an abolitionist. He would not strike at slavery where it existed. And here, suddenly, he was changing the character of war. But Secretary of State Seward worried that until the Army had won a real victory, emancipation would seem like the last shriek on the retreat. August 20th, 1862. An open letter to the President. We think you are unduly influenced by the counsels of certain fossil politicians hailing from border slave states. We ask you to consider that slavery is everywhere the inciting cause and sustaining base of treason. It seems to us the most obvious truth that whatever strengthens or fortifies slavery drives home the wedge intended to divide the Union. Horace Greeley. August 22nd. My paramount object in this struggle is to save the Union and is not either to save or to destroy slavery. If I could save the Union without freeing any slave, I would do it. If I could save it by freeing all the slaves, I would do it. And if I could save it by freeing some and leaving others alone, I would also do that. So as you heard, <clears throat> so as you heard, it was never about freeing slaves. It was about Saving the Union. And what did they want to save the Union for? Because the South decided that they wanted to break away from the big brother government that had became the Union. And uh, I know people will argue, and they'll say, those clips don't really substantiate any of that, because it's not even talking about the South. And it's not even talking about any of that or what they was trying to get away from. It just says that he basically didn't, his thing wasn't to free the slaves. It was to win the Union, win for the Union. But what do you think the whole battle was about anyway? It was about states' rights. It had nothing to do with the uh, slavery. Or owning of slaves. So I'm going to move away from this subject and go back to the same subject about the NAACP here in Dalton, Georgia, trying to remove the Southern statue downtown. The uh, general. He's been standing there for years. He's been there my whole life in town. I think they may have uh, changed his location once or twice. I don't remember. He may have been in the exact spot where he's at. I don't know. I think they may have moved him or something once. Uh, anyways, they're wanting to completely do away with it. And they've been trying for years. This, this statue has been attacked before. And I'm sure it's going to be attacked till it's actually taken down. But when it is actually taken down, just like I said in my first part of the podcast, I hope each and every one of these... Idiots that are in charge right now, if, if they take it down, they're idiots. They need to be booted out. They need to be voted out of office. So now I'm going to move on to even a more interesting little tidbit about my town. In the late 80s and the early 90s, they started flooding us, just influx, of illegal aliens. And according to my daddy, it started even long before then, but they really started taking root in 1988. That's when I noticed on a whole bunch been at school. That's when my classroom even got one in it. Uh, of Mexicans. And like I said, Mexicans is a nationality from the country of Mexico. It has nothing to do with race, but yet you're always called a racist for opposing them. And I couldn't be a racist if I wanted to be. Because I've got American Indian in my bloodline. As you notice, I said American Indian. I didn't say Native American. I said American Indian. I like that better. I don't like all these politically correct terms like African American and Native American and all that. Uh, uh, Indians from 
the Americas, not the Indians of the Indian world, but I've got Indian blood in me, and uh, not sure which tribe, because my mother's people come from Mississippi. Uh, so not really sure where our heritage, which tribe our heritage come from, and where, where they might have even moved from before they got to Mississippi. We don't know, because my mother never asked. Now everybody's gone, but what of you? Uh, but anyways, to back to my point, Mexicans taking over this town. And if you know the story about the Trail of Tears, and you know the story about how they moved them from here to Oklahoma, and all them places out there on the plains. The story goes that in Dalton, Georgia, they went down to Washington. I mean, sorry, Atlanta. I'm sure they went to Washington, too, because people did that, too, by the way. But from the part of the, where the history I read, they went down to Atlanta and had the governor at the time pass laws saying that the Indians could not own their carpet mills or their property here in Dalton, Georgia. So these blood-owned carpet mills, in my opinion, this is just my opinion, felt guilty because they had racist blood on their hands. They wanted to make up for their woes that they did to the Indians by sending them on the Trail of Tears. The Cherokees, which owned this area. So they wanted to make up for the blood on their hands. So they started giving this area to the Mexicans. Another form of Indian that's from the, down in Mexico. Usually off the, uh, whatever they were called. Uh, oh, I've done forgot what them tribes was called but they had that big pyramid down there and the, they cut off the heads and rolled them down the thing uh, they gave our area to them because they had blood on their hands because they were racist bastards and now they want to pin the rest of us for opposing our town being changed, our landscape being changed by these Mexicans, many of them illegal aliens it would be one thing if they were legal Mexicans coming here to live in Dalton and become Americans, but that wasn't what they did. Uh, indeed, they came here hostile. They came here running over the citizens that were already here. I was one of them that they tried to spit on and run over and everything else. So I got mad and decided to start combating illegal immigration because of it. Because I've seen the effects of illegal immigration. It's destroyed this town. It changed the way that this town is. And we're talking about removing a statue of a war that happened 150 plus years ago. Uh, but yet, we've got Spanish signs everywhere. Uh, Spanish when they should be in English, they should. if they come here, they should be learning English. I can understand them having trouble not knowing English, because it's hard to learn other languages. Even I've looked at some of the languages, and I don't think I could speak any of them. But it's the point that if you come to a person's country, you are to adapt and become what they are, what their country stands for, become a citizen, <clears throat> not live off the land and steal IDs of people. These people who like to call you racist never want to address that subject. But how they steal IDs and live off people's social security numbers and all that. But the real racist in this town was the carpet mills who went down to Atlanta. And I'm sure they went to Washington too because that went on too during the months of the Trail of the Tears, the years of the Trail of the Tears. They did that they went to Washington and moved them from state to state. Uh, but the part of the story I know about this city is 
the part that I read was that they went down to Atlanta. So uh, that was the real racist, but yet we're the racist for opposing the illegal immigration because they want to make up for the blood on the hands. Plus, it's a double whammy because they get to pay them less, too. Because you get to pay, it's really just a mistreatment of human beings is what it is. Illegal immigration is basically just mistreating humans. The problem is they go get many jobs, plus they get the welfare and everything else, and then they got plenty of money to send back home. And it never helps our economy. That's the problem. That's the problem they never want to discuss. That's another problem they don't want to discuss. Besides the uh, not wanting to discuss the fact that it's uh, they're still in identities. So uh, if they remove that statue, vote them out of office. And 70% of the people voted for Donald Trump. And you know what Donald Trump stood for? He stood for building the wall, defeating ISIS, uh, stopping Obamacare. One of the things he's been accomplishing is ISIS. I read the other day, and this is from the MSN app, the Microsoft Network app, on my Microsoft smartphone. Uh, ISIS is about decimated. They're down to 2,000. Isn't that great? ISIS is about defeated. Now, the only thing is, I also read today that Al Qaeda is now taking up their bad habits. So maybe Donald Trump can defeat Al Qaeda as well, since he got rid of ISIS. He's doing away with ISIS. Now, the problem is, they've inspired all these little nuts, and they're probably all over the United States as well. Plus, Antifa and the Democrats, they've aligned themselves with uh, Islam too. So just because you defeat ISIS, Islam lives on. Radical Islam lives on. But at least ISIS won't be anymore. I'm tired of hearing that name. I want to see them decimated. I want to, unfortunately, we'll hear about some other down though Islamic group. George Soros is funding it all, of course. God, I hope God deals with him soon. He's an old man, and I just pray. I pray for God to deal with this piece of trash, this filth on this planet. This filth that needs to just bust hell wide open. That's my prayer, Jesus. I want you to deal with him yourself. And I know Pastor Peacock goes on about praying against your enemies. <laughs> but... George Soros is a monster. <coughs> and it's time he stopped. I wish they'd throw his ass in prison. But that probably won't never happen. That's what I would like to see. So, I think I'm going to close this podcast. I discussed some very interesting stuff today. And particularly that about the UFOs. If you can find that documentary, you watch it. It's good. I'm not going to tell you where you can find it, but you can look for it. and You can try to find it. It's on Netflix. It's called Unacknowledged. And it's by Dr. Stephen Greer. Somebody else directed it. That's whose info it's about. And getting back onto that subject, uh, well, I'm going to close here because this, this has been a pretty good big podcast. It's been mostly about the Civil War. But it's about the UFOs, too. That's a good documentary. So, I'm going to close. My handles are APSR Music on Instagram, APFNS on Twitter. Thank you for listening, and goodbye for this podcast. You say you've got to stand for something, or you'll fall for anything. Thank you for listening to the APS show on Rock and Roll 100 FM.com. The Duck. Quack. 2017 All Rights Reserved.